It's the next level. <laughs> My son, the Lord is watching over us in times of despair. Wilford knew exactly how to hit us. He has to have someone over here. Someone who told him about the tensions. People are going to blame the tales. I have to make this right. We both do. You prove it wasn't the tale. I'll keep a lid on things while you do. The Gales border is on lockdown. I could break men on every link. There's no trouble yet. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. This is gonna boil. <laughs> Breachman busted it. Your loss is all of Snowpiercer's. You know who did this. Welcome back to the show, panelers. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this is a spoilerful podcast of Snowpiercer Season 2, Episode 7, Our Answer for Everything. I don't know if that title's really, I don't know if it really helps a lot, but that's, that is what it is. And the synopsis <laughs> is Leighton and Till investigate the murders. Wilford leads Miss Audrey down a dark path. Oh, goodness. So. I think that's a great adjective mm-hmm. to describe what road we went on this exactly. week. Exactly. So tell us what, tell me what your, what were your initial thoughts like the first time watching the episode? Okay. So I was hoping that we were going to get an update on Melanie, Ugh. or at least that we were going to catch up to where Melanie came to the train and mm-hmm. we saw Alex at the back. We did not get that. No. I feel like we may have gotten like half of it. Yeah, and I'll talk about that when we get to to our our first point. But I'm with you. They teased us in the mm-hmm. with the previously on, giving us so much information about Melanie, and then she's not in the episode, not listed in the credits, not anything. And I was like, come on. And just yeah. to, to to straighten out something from last week, the st- I realized after watching Many Miles from Snowpiercer, watching the Melanie episode, that the stuff Pike used to kill Terrence was the same stuff that Melanie used to fix the glass in yeah, the station. It's some, it's some sort of foam. Some sort of some super sort caulking. Of, yeah. <laughs> Worked really well. Uh, it did. It did. I'm not sure why <laughs> Terrence would have that just like setting around in his in his like residence, but you know, I guess that's uh Terrence May he rest in peace. Was mm-hmm. a man of mystery. Yes, <laughs> we may. We're never going to know. And, and Pike everything. is a very uh, what's the what's the word for um, ingenious or spur of the moment? He's very I don't know spontaneous. Um, he thank comes you, up, spontaneous. Yeah, with a spontaneous way of dealing with the issue. Exactly. I think he had planned to have a knife fight of some kind, mm-hmm. but it ended up being Beth. Um, it just ended up being death by super cocking, I guess we can, we can say. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into, let's get into our top five discussion points. Right. What's your first one? So my first one is the more things change, the more they stay the same. And what that means is despite the war and everyone kind of coming together, the train is still very much divided amongst the classes I feel like we saw that this week with Mm -hmm. third class getting irritated with the tail and wanting to take things out on the tail, blaming them for the breachmen because it was set up to look like that and create chaos. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, especially this episode and a couple episodes back where Eugenia is talking about what she wants, how she wants things to get back to the way they were, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, you know, I I like that you you brought this up because we got a glimpse of first class also still kind of running business as usual. Yeah, they are. Like they're they're still having their fancy dinners. They're still in their fancy dresses and, and, and all that. And, you know, second class and third class are kind of, everything's, it's, I don't want to say it got back because the other, 
classes didn't, but, uh, but yeah, first class seems to have settled back in or is trying to settle back in at least. So. Yeah. I think that they still wield a lot of power. Mm -hmm. And we saw, I think at the end of the episode with the red lights, how, that little bit of power, how that little bit of turmoil can spread. Because before it was just like one or two lights, and now we've got half a train full of lights or more. Yeah, and we're 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 seeing also that first class is there's still a lot of cars left that are first class. I guess I never really thought about it because they haven't they haven't you know they they said how many people are, and I think I I have it in one of our notes where Till because Till says there's like whatever she's got the exact number of how many people are on the train. Um, and I wonder how many of those are, are first class passengers still. So, yeah. And we talked about, I think last week or the week before about how they had to have been investors mm -hmm. in this project. Yeah. And yeah. that's why that's how they got onto the train is they were investors in the project in Snowpiercer and it's, itself. And we'll talk some more about first class passengers here in a little oh, bit, I think. Yes, okay. we, I think we will. <laughs> um, but my first one is, is we kind of already alluded to it talking about our initial thoughts, but just kind of the timing that this episode, it seems to take up at least the morning after the deaths of the, of the breachmen. Um, and yes. we know that that was that, that at that point, two episodes ago in episode five, uh, I think we were three days from the pickup or we, we were three days from the turnaround and then, or something like that. We were just a few days from them turning around and going back to pick up Melanie. So I'm not sure if that meant. They were in the Himalayas. Right. I and believe. So they, and they were going to do like a roundabout and turn around and go back and get her. Right. And that may be what the corkscrew yeah. thing is that they're doing now. That yeah. They're doing at the end is, is, the, is the actual turnaround. Is yes. the corkscrew. And so however many days it takes them to get from the Himalayas to Melanie should be about 15 because it's like a month total. Right. She thought so it was supposed to be a, a, a pure month turnaround. Yes. Right. And so, yeah. And they were off schedule or well, late. Yeah, we know. Yeah. We know that from Melanie's episode, last episode, that they're at least going to be a few days late. So we we're still, you know, a, a couple of weeks away from getting to where we were at the end of the last episode with Alex yeah. looking like she's locked in the back of the train or, or something and then seeing Melanie out in the snow. So, um, so we're yeah, still I, a couple of weeks away. I hope that doesn't mean like the next two episodes are going to be on the train and then we're not getting back to Melanie until the I end. have a feeling Steve that they are going to make this a little more complicated for us, and we're not going to get back to mm -hmm. Melanie until the end. Now, I could be wrong, and I'm happy to be wrong. However, we have three episodes left now, and I just have a feeling next week we already know we'll, we sh probably won't get back to her because it should yeah. be like continuing to catch up. Right, because they're going to there's a lot there's a lot more to finish out this this tale. That, that, this yes. tale, that's not, I didn't even mean that as a pun, um, of where, of <laughs> it where is we're the at. Tale. This, and, this part of the tale. <laughs> and I'm going to throw something in here in my number five, just because it kind of goes along with the Breachman deaths, is that no one even mentioned Terrence at all. No. Um, and, and, you know, the only even brief mention we get of is, is there's that conversation where the guys are looking at Pike and they're like, what happened to Pike and uh, Murray, right? The last Australian. Yes. He right. says, you don't want to know or, or something like that. So I'm wondering if Pike and Terrence somehow cleaned up the murder scene and got rid of Terrence's body or hit his body or something like that, because nobody's even mentioned that he's missing. And, and you think as a prominent figure, he would be missed. Like exactly. not, him not being around would be a problem. You would think, but, but from what I could tell, and I, I was really looking for it in the second time I watched it, there was no, no, no. mention of him at all. So maybe no. you know, that's another part of the story that's got to get wrapped up. So, yes, so to speak. I think so too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, so what, what is your number four? <laughs> My number four is the sense of family mm -hmm. because I feel like they kept going back to that a couple of times we see Katya and her grandson, I think it's her grandson, and he's kind of taking care of her, and she's got all these things she's trading and those little red lights, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they came from her or if they were just 
Or she just had one because she needed to light it. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I'm not. Because he said something about the red candles that's, that signify Wilford. And so yeah. you would think there might already have been red candles out there. But it does seem like he said something about she's been trading a lot of red candles lately or or something like that. So maybe she had a bunch of them. And people yeah. uh, who knew this 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 thing was coming up, they knew that this could be a, I don't know if it's like an election or what, but. Uh, way to show support for Wilford. So it, yeah. they didn't really explain that too well. They just, we got a very quick kind of at the end of the episode where they're like, oh, the red lights, that represents Wilford. And that means everybody wants Wilford to take over again. And even Wilford thinks that. And he's like, you know, go get Icy Bob ready. <laughs> so. I know. I know. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah. And um, Roche, we got to see, and I'm nervous now. Because we did get to see Roche's family, I'm afraid for them because yeah. I can see them being used against him at some point. I yeah. don't want that. But we finally got to see his wife and daughter, which I thought was cool. Yeah, it was very it was very touching to see that. And I love that. And I think I, I wrote it in my notes is, is that whole thing where she says, well, should we light one too? And he says, you know, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. So he's even kind of on the fence now about yeah. whether Wilford should be back in control. Well, or not. you know what? I don't know that he is so much on the fence as he's just trying to keep his family safe and mm. he'll do what he needs to to keep them safe, whether or not it's exactly right. Okay. At least that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking right now he's not sure. I think he's one of those people that will jump onto the wagon at the very last second if he has to, to protect his family. But I don't know that he would be... Completely on Wilford's team from the beginning. Like, right. I'm just not sure. Yeah. Given yeah. everything that's happened, mm -hmm. especially with the Breachman dying. I think, yeah, I think once, if they're able to prove, and I've got, I'll talk about more with this when we get, when we get to my, one of my points with Till. If they're able to prove Wilford's complicitness or how he manipulated that whole thing with the Breachman, um, I think that could go a long ways to helping, but I, I don't know how anyway we'll get to that we'll get to that because i've yeah. got some more about till and the investigation <laughs> and the murders um yeah but i want to talk too. about i want to talk about alex for a minute um because i really thought her interactions with wilford in this episode were were kind of interesting because it seems like she's she knows that he was involved in whatever went on up train but she doesn't know what it was hospitality won't tell her the hospitality guy says something like well if you were supposed to know he would have told you or something like that yeah and uh, but you know she starts to question him and she's starting to see that that manipulation that he has yeah. and it was it it made my stomach turn especially the second time watching it when he manipulated her about how he saved her life. And he's like, you owe me for being alive. And if you were, you know, and you, you've got to make a decision to choose me because I'm the one that saved you and all that. And I was like, come on, man, you're, that's a kid, you know, yeah. you're, you're berating a kid and you're making her feel bad about herself. And I'm just like, man, I'm over you, dude. And it seems well, like you, she's starting to be over him. <laughs> too. You wonder what line. I mean, he's crossed so many lines as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he there's any redemption for him at all. I don't think there is. I think what he did with the Breachmen, I think what he did with Kevin, which we'll talk about in a bit. Ooh. Yes, Kevin is alive. I thought he might be. You, yeah, that you were, you were right. I think you brought that up around, yeah, at whatever point it was. You said Kevin might not be dead, and I'm like, I don't know. And so, no, yeah. you're kudos to you for figuring that one out. Yeah, I think it was one the episode that we saw Audrey in Audrey's, the tub slicing mm -hmm. her arm. It made me think, okay, maybe this is some sort of rite of passage. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, I think that's it. Yeah. But yeah. um, I had one more thing, too, about family. If you look at the Tailies protecting their own, mm -hmm. the Tailies are really a family, too. Like a, That's really good. They're a huge unit. And Leighton was very careful to make sure when things started happening, he knew they had to go and get everybody. Mm-hmm. And bring them back to safety, especially like Lights and Winnie, because they were so far up train. 
Yeah. And he was really focused on that. Um, they couldn't take Pike because Pike was incapacitated. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think doing that for Leighton has pushed him over some edges that maybe Leighton may not. Leighton may come back to regret it. I'm not sure it'll be this season, but it could be, you know, further down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see with how they how they do that with Pike and how his character arc works uh, through the rest yeah. of this season and, and into uh, the third season. So he's so good, though. Mm-hmm. Stephen Ogg is so good. I watched a clip from The Walking Dead because someone had posted it in one of my Facebook groups I'm in, and I and he was in the scene, and I just he's just so, he's so good at playing these characters Mm -hmm. and now we're even getting to see something a little deeper where he's still kind of menacing, but he's also kind of human. Like this is really impacting him. And I like the way that he's playing this. Yeah. And it's, it's really great because he, you can see he had this whole arc after the war where it really, the war really affected him. And then Leighton having him go kill Terrence that pushed him even further into this, this kind of hole or this kind of craziness uh, that he's in. And we even see in a way, you know, that the, the third class is kind of a family because they're all banding together to go against the Tailies. Yeah. You know, and, you, and the people that are for Wilford. And you would think that they'd be more focused on like first class versus the Tailies, but I think the Breachmen were more connected with the third class and they're blaming the tailies because of these things that were happening in the breachman being blamed originally mm-hmm. for lights, lights injury. Right. right. So uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. I, I so many things are going on. Like I said, I feel like I need to get a whiteboard and, and draw <laughs> it out. <laughs> All right. So where are we at? Are we at your number three, which I yes. think your, your and I's number three is very similar. Yes, Till. Oh, my goodness. First of all, I was really scared for her in this episode. I, at one point, I questioned, are you really going to do this? Mm -hmm. Are you going to, is she going to be gone? Mm. I hope not. You know, I really was concerned for her because with this show, you just don't know from one minute to the next what's going to happen. And... I was afraid for her. I really was. I was really worried when she separated from Leighton and said, I can take care of one man myself. And I'm like, oh, Ugh. no. Even cops need partners there, girl. You know, yes. you, you don't go try to, to apprehend somebody by yourself. You know, that's that's not a good thing. So, yeah, I, I loved how she – and like I said, this was my number three as well. So I love how she's collecting evidence. She's watching people. She's got those cop eyes. She's kind of mm-hmm. got her cop eyes back. And – uh and so she, you know, she's seeing all these different things and she's putting the pieces together. When she hears the description of the woman from first class, she knows exactly who it is because she yes. knows everybody on this train. She has taken this detective job seriously. Yes. And uh, I love that about, about her. I love, just like I said, the way she kind of puts everything together with those St. Christopher medals. And, but again, then she goes to try to apprehend the pastor on her own. And I'm like, what are you doing? And we're left with kind of a, a, a cliffhanger in a way. Cause you know, the pastor coughs. So he's at least kind of alive. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I didn't trust him. Did not trust him. Yeah, I had a feeling he had that he suicide machine news. queued up and ready to go. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he, he had that Ugh. other woman who obviously was someone else who helped him. And it looked like she was not, you know, I wonder if the, the, cause one of the things that Till says is she says, we're looking for eight, at least eight suspects. Cause all of the murders happened like simultaneously. Yeah. So she knows there's got to be at least eight uh, yes. people involved. And then there should yeah. be somebody running, kind of running things. And she figures that out that it's the pastor. So we've seen the pastor. We've seen these two females. Uh, the first class woman and this one that was in, uh, I'm assuming she's a third class person because she's in that car yeah. with the pastor. So these eight people must be spread out through all the classes. I'm you know. thinking potentially, I don't think Eugenia and she was the one that was in first class. I don't mm-hmm. think she killed anyone, but I think she was involved 
with mass, maybe masterminding. No, I we'll think she killed Sherry. That's what. That's why oh, Till Till wiped yes, the makeup right. off her face because she said, and she saw the bruise. She said Sherry yeah. was a fighter. She and, didn't or, go down without a fight. We knew yeah. that. We knew that she didn't. Yeah. Um. So I think she killed Cherry, but we don't know who killed everybody else, and we don't all the know. Others. And we don't know who was the one going after Boki. Because remember, we saw the guy right. with the hood. Maybe that was the pastor himself. I don't know. Leighton um, has no idea that he saved Boki's life. Mm -hmm. Like he, him going there saved Boki's life. He yeah. would have, as strong as he is, mm -hmm. he would have gone down. I mean, yeah. I, they dispensed with all of them, and they were all pretty tough. And that's the other thing so, I was going to say about the first, that I don't think all of them are first class passengers mm -mm. that were murderers because Eugenia, obviously she was tall. She was strong. So she had the capacity to, to fight with cherry. Um, but we don't know the, the rest of them, who, who mm -mm. they were. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Nervous. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see if Till's able to either root the rest of them out or if the pastor survives, is he going to confess? How is I she going to put the evidence together? Cause right now, Eugenia is the only one that she really has evidence against, right? Yes. She's got the button. Yes. She's got the bruise, you know. Um, I think Eugenia knows. I think she knows who the others are. It could be. I would hope so. And we'll see. I mean, maybe she was the one masterminding it all, all along, her and the pastor together. Who knows? Well, because uh, I think the pastor's been in touch with Wilfred. Mm -hmm. I think I so. think he's got some sort of communication device that's rigged up yeah. and i think he has been in touch with wilford so that i i'm pretty sure of okay but yeah i i i am curious as to how till is going to put the rest of these pieces together mm -hmm. because there's a lot of pieces yeah yeah and we only have three episodes left so. I know we're almost done with the season, and then <laughs> you gotta wait. Who knows how long? I know for they're season filming. Three. I they? believe okay. they're filming. Okay. I yeah. So maybe next year, maybe not Let's October hope. of this year. I wouldn't think, but uh, you know, it just depends on how quickly they can turn it around. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check into that. Yeah. Um. All right. So that brings us to your number two. Okay. I feel like this was an episode of growth. For a couple of characters, including Ruth, I mm -hmm. feel like she, this was about realizing the impact of her past actions. Absolutely. I think she addressed those slowly throughout the episode. She realized, one, she chose to stay behind and not go to Wilfred. That's, you know, a decision she made, mm -hmm. which I'm glad she did. Because I think she knows that Snowpiercer needs her and... She has the train's best interests at heart. Yeah. No matter who the leader is, I think she's going to try to take care of the people. I feel like she has this responsibility to the passengers. Um, but then when everything hit the fan mm -hmm. and she runs and they are all hiding in the doctor's office and Winnie oh. is cr crying and screaming... And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is, you know, this is traumatic for her to mm -hmm. see this woman. And that's when I think Ruth finally started to realize you, you know. You have done some terrible things. And Allison Wright portrayed that moment, like, without hardly saying a word. Because I think she does say something like, I don't know how to, how to respond or I don't know what, what I can say. But you can see on her face when they tell her, well, this girl is, is terrified of you because you tried to take her arm and then you took her mother's arm and, and the mother you, died as a and, result and you just see it on allison wright's face the way her mouth moves the way her eyes kind of roll around and you could just and it just was like to me it just it moved me to see her yeah. reaction to that and then later on when she goes to winnie and she's able to convince her and you see her carrying winnie Mm -hmm. Um, I was just so, I was so pleased to see that progression, uh, through this. Me to too. Where, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause she realizes now she's all alone and her brother has, you know, her brother, her brother died has died. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's all, you know, she has no one left. All she has left are the Tailies who are her, her family. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about family. 
Yeah. And one tail, even though we're one train, it's mm-hmm. still one tail. Exactly. Yeah. And that <laughs> was clear when the tailies were going after lights and Winnie and everyone. Mm-hmm. They just wanted to get them back safely. Yeah. And even Pike buys her just, I mean, Pike gets taken mm-hmm. while she's running away. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I love that, that scene. I have it in my notes when she finds the door to the little observation port that we saw yes, uh, with Lila Jr. and Alex a couple episodes ago. And she's, and she's looking, I don't know if it's the same port or not, but it, probably not the same place, but, uh, and she sees those lights strung across the, the railroad, the rail tracks. I thought that was, oh, it's just a great scene. Again, we talked, we talked about the, the way this is shot and the way they're doing some of the digital, um, the, the digital, um, Imagery. Imagery. Thank you. I don't know why I can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The digital imagery, imagery that they're, they're doing is just amazing. I think it's really great. Now, you know, 10 years from now, we may look back at it and go, man, that was bad. Well, but, yes. CGI doesn't always hold up, but, you know. But right we'll now, see. <laughs> right now, it's good. So, <laughs> yes. I was happy too for her to get to look out and see that because she's just a child and mm-hmm. she doesn't know. I mean, she really hasn't seen a lot in her life, yeah. even though they give her some pretty serious jobs. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Running the messages back and forth and all sorts of, yeah. Yeah. They give her some pretty serious jobs and she's able to, to do them. I'm not sure why she was up train today other than maybe delivering a message, but I don't, I mean, the border was closed and things yeah. were protected. And yeah, they didn't really explain why why so many of them were were up train. Yeah, uh, lights and Winnie, and um, so yeah. It, I, Other than reasons. working, I mean, I'm sure they all have mm-hmm. jobs. Yeah, I think that she and um, I think they were in third class because they were at the market area. I think okay. probably trying to sell some things. Could be. So yeah. I'm guessing that that's where they were because Pike was there also, mm-hmm. peddling his, peddling his pot. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> so. All right. So, what is your number one? I think we have the same number one. So it's going to be quite a discussion. Okay, my number one is Audrey, and everything Audrey in this episode. <laughs> I, this is one episode, I mean, I've, it's difficult to watch when they put someone's arm out of port hole and you know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's difficult to watch some of the maiming and things that have happened. It was incredibly difficult to watch this psychological manipulation, cognitive therapy that she was doing on Kevin. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that was... That's when I realized Wilford really, there is no redemption for him. Yeah. He's, he's, he's just so, he's dug in so deep. If he is, like, I'm still on, I'm still on the side of, I believe, I think she's just doing this really deep undercover kind, me of, too. kind of thing. I, I hope, I hope that there's something like, like her saying, I'm fine was it, was a trigger or, or a, you know, a, a, a code or something to, to, or the not yet obviously was a, was a code or, uh, because, yeah. because neither Wilford, Wilford doesn't believe that she's fully on his side and neither do Leighton and Ben. They both think she's compromised as well. Yeah. If, if that's what, if that's what Leighton meant when she, when he said, yes, we have to believe that. Or Ben says, we have to believe she's compromised. And he says, yes, we do. So nobody believes that she's doing the right thing. The only thing I can point to specifically in this episode that, that leans me that way is when she got done with Kevin, Kevin was not following Wilford's commands. He was following <laughs> Audrey's commands. Yes, she he snapped yes. her fingers. She told him what to do. And, and he did it. Mm-hmm, she told him to say, thank you, Mr. Wilford. And so I'm really wondering if she's, all not as bad, but she's she's manipulated Kevin into her, yes. her clutches kind of thing. I feel like she learned from the best. Mm-hmm. I mean, she learned from him because he's manipulated her all this time. And also, we don't know exactly what the discussion was, 
in that room. We only saw just what they showed us, and mm-hmm. that was not enough. Yeah. We don't yeah. know what she said to him. For all we know, she could have said, listen, I know he's a, he's bad. I know we have to get rid of him. I need to get you to a place so that you can help me do that. Like, yeah. we don't know what... I don't know. I mean, because they only showed us a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We only saw the, those brief glimpses that we saw her turn the lights down. We saw her go into her kind of night car mode mm-hmm. of, of therapy. And, yes. And then we see her putting words in his mouth, snapping her fingers and, and you know, uh, leading him along. So, uh, so yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Miss Audrey, I'm really glad we've seen so much of Miss Audrey this Me this too. Season. And uh, it's just, this second season is, I don't want to say it's better because it hasn't finished yet. And I haven't rewatched yeah. season one completely yet. So I don't want to say it's necessarily better. I think we're getting more. I think is, so too. <laughs> is what's happening. So I think season one gave us the table, the plates, a little bit of the dinner. Mm-hmm. And I think that season two is giving us as many courses as possible mm-hmm. while not giving us dessert. Okay. If that makes any <laughs> sense. I feel like that's what I feel like that's the analogy I have for that. I like it. So I like far. It. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, well, so do we have any notes that we haven't talked about yet? I'm trying to see. Uh, um, I, I really only have, there's only one of my notes that we, we haven't really talked about. Well, I mentioned the shot of the corkscrew that was incredible, but uh, yeah. did, did Pike, did he really think nobody was going to recognize him because he shaved his head and shaved his beard? Nobody's going to recognize me later. I I'm don't. Gone. I mean, <laughs> I can't imagine not recognizing yeah. him. And, it's, and the look on his face when they go, he's one of them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, Yeah. So. Yeah. Didn't work. And you know, we didn't, what we didn't talk about too is Leighton being willing to sacrifice himself for pike that was interesting yeah him him saying take my arm if you're going to take somebody's arm i'm the one that you don't like i almost wondered if he thought that would be a way i almost wonder if he thought that would redeem him in their eyes and would put him back into their good graces by showing him how much he's showing them how much he's willing to sacrifice but i was a little unclear i was really glad that that uh ruth was able to convince not not to do it, but talk about power. Mm-hmm. Ruth has a lot of power. Yeah. And that was another instance of her showing how much power she has. At least we're able to see how much power she has yeah. through that scene, I think. Um, um for me, Lila Jr., <laughs> she's so devious and sassy at the same time, where she's telling Till, blame it on the tailies like you used to. Mm-hmm. And it's just like Okay. Yeah. She s- keeps acting like she's still in first class. Yes. And, and she still... isn't. No. And why she... isn't she in first class? Like, I'm not 100% well, sure. Because her parents, the, the car that her, her parents were in that car that, that yeah. got, that, that got, or those right. cars. Um, so. But shouldn't she be I, an heiress was, then? Well, I don't know because she was also, you know, she wasn't, did they, they, they made her, they, they convicted her. Mm-hmm. Of the murders, and yeah. and then they commuted her sentence, and I think that's why she's working for the janitors. I think it's kind of like a that's her her penance penance, penance yeah uh, yeah for the, for the murders is that that she's not going to get to go back to first class that she's I think that's what was kind of discussed at the end of the season. Yeah, well, too. Um, also, Boki. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to come back to bite Wilford. The fact that Boki's alive because yeah. I th- he intended for them all to be dead, and if, and I think if Boki finds out that Wilfred ordered that, yeah, if Till's able to actually prove and get all the get all the 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 proof that it was that this was ordered by Wilfred that Wilfred was in control of it, yeah, I think Boki stands to be a a good ally. He is. He's big. He's strong, and and next week we're gonna see. I think we're gonna see Icy Bob put into play. Which mm-hmm. now we're finally going to see what is it that Icy Bob is supposed to do? Is he going to get out and walk across the top of the train? Maybe I, oh, I don't yeah. know. Because he would be able to breach if they if they if they're still locked down and they're not mm-hmm. opening up the, the. He would be able to actually get out of the train and survive 
and walk to another location. And oh, that's good. I hadn't thought yeah. about that. I'm, I was thinking about him being the one to go after Melanie, but now yeah. that's a better because he could probably go all the way to the front of the train, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, or I see Bob could get off the train. Mm. And we haven't seen him attack Melanie because it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Like, I, there's so much, the timing of this. I'm trying to piece together the timeline mm -hmm. so I know what, you know, how it lines up. And, you know, the only other note I had is I'm really concerned over all this support for Wilfred, especially because we've seen how egotistical, manipulative, and just basically, you know, he's just sadistic. Yeah, I, and I think that's, that's really the only, the only thing for me that's not, that's not playing well for me is the, the, Late and sudden law. I guess it's not really sudden because the death of the breachman, the unrest in second and third class, and so it, I could kind of see him losing his his kind of hold on being in charge. Um, but it, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out in the next. Because I mean, we we kind of are suspecting because of of the of last episode, we're suspecting that Wilford's going to get to take over. The train uh, get to take over Snowpiercer, but I, we'll see. I guess I'm not. thinking that that may happen, but I too also think that being a leader is not what Leighton really wants, mm -hmm. but he's trying, and I feel like he has grown as a leader so far. And I think we're gonna see a lot of them be tested. Mm -hmm. I think over the next couple of episodes, it's going to get very very crazy and we're all just gonna have to buckle our seatbelts. yep and hang on for the ride <laughs> hold on <laughs> to your butts all right <laughs> <laughs> so uh we've got a few quotes here um i i laughed at the beginning when they were talking about audrey and they're talking about what they think is going on and ruth says oh she's freshly shagged bathing in rose water <laughs> <laughs> which is i think exactly what happened i think so yeah <laughs> Um, I loved Ruth's monologue where she basically saves Leighton's arm and probably his life, mm -hmm. where she says, this man is your leader. You chose him. You want someone else in charge, then call for change. But don't strip him down and mutilate him just because you can. It's not right. Believe me. I know. I've done it. You'll never be the same once you have. This is not the way. Not anymore. And I love that because I feel like she, this is when I really saw she could be an incredible leader mm -hmm. for this train. Yeah, I, that was interesting because it, it's kind of one of those differences between the movie and the, the TV show is the, the kind of similar character of Ruth in the movie had taken several arms. Yes. And, you know, and, and it was almost, she was almost indifferent to it. But it seems like from that speech that Ruth hadn't actually done it very, very often. Yeah, that, I don't think that she had. Yeah, well, or she Suzanne had stoned been, herself to it. I think. Yeah, yeah, but that. So I, I, I love that. That's really great. Um, and then I just again I laughed when when Strong Boy spoke, and uh, the, Marie's like, "Your English is coming back." And then Strong Boy just goes, "And." <laughs> <laughs> well, we we forget that they were in those drawers, the three mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, and he came out speaking Mandarin, so... It's like, I don't know, yeah. That was, yeah, that was definitely interesting. And they wanted him to stay behind because he does stick out, but I think also he's the best one to protect the tail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they need that. I think so. Right now. They lost a lot in the war. Yes, they did. They lost a lot of people, a lot of good people, not only in the battle, but on that car that basically everyone froze to death. That was mm -hmm. just, yeah, that was so sad. My second quote is from Pastor Logan, where he says, We all crave stability, but Wilfred brings order. We just have to suffer for a moment to get to our salvation. And I'm thinking, it's more than a moment that you suffer. Wilfred, yeah. the way he runs the that other piece of the train is so, I mean, it's so regimented. No one has any privacy or any peace. And they live in this fear of this tyrant, basically. Yeah, and I wonder what that's going to be like if he does get to take the the train to take Snowpiercer over again. Is he is he going to be able to keep first class 
first class and then rule his iron fist over second and third. Uh, and the tailies. I'm worried for the tailies. I think he's going to send all the tailies back to the tail and starve them. Yeah. That, Frankly, that, I think that's what's going to happen. And so I oof. feel like he's going to take over and it makes me nervous. Yeah. But I also have faith in the allies that Leighton and Ruth and Roche, that little group, I feel like they're going to be strong enough to overcome it. Mm-hmm. I think there's just, you know, Till needs to uncover the evidence to be able yeah. to prove that Wilford did it. Yeah, that's definitely needs, that needs to be the big, that's going to be the big story arc or the big point yeah. to, to see if that's able to happen. So It uh, is, it's crazy. <laughs> my last one is just during that whole Audrey and Kevin scene, uh, when she finds out, uh, just the statement was so, she says it very coldly almost, and she realizes what she's going to have to do to give it to therapize, therapize? Uh, this guy, uh, she says he took you to the bath. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's just chilling. Uh, that, uh, so, yes, it is chilling. It is bone chilling to hear those words because it's so manipulative. And I mean, yeah, I don't think there are any words. I want to see more of this. And I just hope I still have to feel that Miss Audrey is still firmly on the Snowpiercer side. Mm-hmm. But I guess we'll see. I don't want to think that she has turned to the bad side. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. I, I really, I, like I said, I really, I'm, I'm still leaning on that she's just so deep undercover that it, it seems like she's turned. But uh, yeah, we'll see. So um, I have some podcast recommendations. Actually, I just have one because I, I saw it come from my feed and I'm excited to listen to it. Um, on Adrenaline Cinema, Mark just released Red Dawn from 1984. Uh, with his guest Wendy, I, I'm sorry that I didn't get to send them a, a voicemail, but uh, I love. This is one of those movies that when I was a kid, I remember going to the theater to see it. I have I have an original from the theater movie poster on oh, my wow. wall that I have framed. That when I joined the Air Force in 1989, I folded it up. Yes, I know I shouldn't have folded it. I folded no. it. I put it in a Footlocker. I found it when I retired in 2010 and went back to my parents' house. And uh, I pulled it out and I saw that it was folded and I was like, oh, crap, I can't believe I folded it. And I took it to a Hobby Lobby and they were able to, to mount it, and paste it. You can kind of still see the fold lines, but they got it into a frame. And uh, so I'm, I'm proud that I have this poster from, you know, almost 36 years ago. Oh, my gosh. A, yes. A long time ago. So. <laughs> uh, and that, I think that it is, ca- yeah, I think it came out in 1984. Yeah, 83 or 84. I remember yeah. it because... Um, the, the funny trivia for Red Dawn is Red Dawn was actually the first film in the theaters to get a PG-13 rating, um, even though it was filmed before Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, it released after Indiana mm-hmm. Jones and the Temple of Doom. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom originally had a PG rating in the theaters. I think there was some point where they shifted and Indiana Jones, and the temple Doom got the PG 13 rating, but it initially was a PG cause there was no, but Indiana Jones and the temple of doom was the, the, the movie that, that tipped the, whatever the most picture association to create the PG 13 rating. And yeah. Red Dawn was the first movie to officially get it. So I have a feeling that Mark's going to cover Indiana Jones, all of I, the movies on adrenaline cinema at I some point. So I may have to, I may have to throw my hat, my proverbial hat into the ring. <laughs> People do have, that. They do I have, that. <laughs> I have my fedora. I have my uh, original fedora again from the from 1983 or whenever <laughs> Triple Doom came out that we, uh, as kids, we biked to go see it. And I still have that fedora. Uh, it's traveled with me over the years. So. Wow. That's crazy. The things that you keep. <laughs> I know. When you move a lot, too, you end up getting rid of some stuff. But then when you stay in place for any length of time, it just all piles up. It is. I have a room that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to see the rest of this room. You can't <laughs> <see>. <laughs> anyway, what about you? Any podcast you recommend this week? Anything you're listening to? Or Well, I have been um, catching up on Walking Dead cast because mm-hmm. Walking Dead, of course, is back. So Jason and Lucy are back bringing us thoughts, opinions, and discussion on all of the episodes. And this is 
They're only back for like six episodes, and they're mm-hmm. more s- not standalone episodes, but they kind of are. But it really is giving us like some backstory that we didn't have before. So I'm really looking forward to listening to what Jason and Lucy have to say going forward. Absolutely. I'm excited for it. Uh, all right. Well, let's, uh, we didn't get any feedback on this episode, but I uh, will, uh, give you the ways that you can give us your feedback. You can obviously, if you're listening to this, you're listening to it probably on your podcast player choice where you could find us as panels to pixels. You might be listening to us on YouTube. I don't know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> you like to put us on YouTube and you know, clean house or something. Uh, but we are panels to pixels podcast on YouTube. You can give us a thumbs up there. Um, subscribe to us. All those good things. We also have a website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. We have our Facebook page where we put up a post every week that you can comment on and we will read those on the podcast. And that is just panels to pixels, uh, facebook.com slash Facebook, Facebook. What am I saying? Facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Uh, we have an email address, panels to pixels one at the mail. <laughs> a new girl fan at all at (laughs) gmail.com. That's a deep cut from real early season of new girl. Um, But uh, panels to pixels one at gmail.com That's panels to pixels one. uh, The two spelled out right in the middle TO and the number one at gmail.com. Next week, we will continue on with episode eight. Eight. Um, I may talk to Mark about if he wants to uh, start joining us on these or if he wants to take a break or uh, what he would like to do, and uh, we'll get back to you, panelers. <laughs> Daphne, what have you got going on this week? Well, I've podcast? been here talking about Snowpiercer, which I love. Uh, it's one of the newest series that I've actually taken a liking to because I don't usually watch a new show because I'm afraid it's going to get canceled once I get invested, so I mm-hmm. kind of stay away, but this is one I jumped on because I really enjoyed the movie. So... I am busy over at Run For Your Lives. Paik and I just released Kong Skull Island. And this week on Friday, we'll be um, dropping our episode on Jurassic Park 3. Oh, yeah. I get to watch Jurassic Park 3 and send in something. Yes. For that one. It's so awesome. We A couple of weeks ago, we did this like look back episode where mm-hmm. we look back at some of the monsters from our earlier movies that we've covered. We just got into such a great discussion on dinosaurs that we decided to go ahead and tackle Jurassic Park 3. Are you are you planning on breaking into the Jurassic World? Oh, absolutely. As well? Yes. So Jurassic Park 3, if I remember correctly, actually has some stuff in it that was left out of the prior movies uh, that was in the books, right? Uh, yes, a few is things. The, is, is that the one that has the petrodactyl scene or is that... Yes, the pterodactyls, yeah. Yes, yeah, pterodactyls. Yeah. Joe Johnston directed it. It was the first one that Spielberg didn't direct. Mm. But Spielberg still had a lot of input, and he had wanted to put the pterodactyls in there. Um, but they're actually two, I should say. They're actually pteranodons and not pterodactyls. Ah. That was something we had to dig into. But... Uh, yeah, Steven Spielberg wanted to put the pteranodons in there in Very the prior cool. movie, but budget just didn't allow for it. Mm-hmm. So he was a stickler, though, and really, really wanted them to be in this in this movie. So he, yeah. he got his wish. Very cool. Very <laughs> so, yeah, cool. so that's dropping on Friday. All right. Well, I'll be sure to check it out. Well, that's it for our show tonight. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we will see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night.